In this video, you learn how to make people admire you using John Cena as an example. First off, an easy way to make people laugh is the comedic mismatch technique. All you have to do is to say something ridiculous in a completely flat tone. We have a bunch of really, really bad jokes and we're going to try to make each other laugh. I feel I will win this because I am dead inside. The trick is to make sure what you have to say is obviously not true. Okay. I'm telling that joke to no one. Not because I don't want to recycle the joke, because I really have no friends. These kinds of jokes are hard to pull off. So if you're going to try this, make sure to mix it up by varying your vocal tone sometimes. Specifically, change the tone of your voice during the punchline. Watching John Cena speak passionately about diversity makes me want to let him crush me with his thighs. Thighs are made for a lot of things. Crushing human beings was not one. I will stick to squats. Thank you. Moving on. We've all heard that you need to have prepared answers to common questions that you get asked in conversation. But John takes this a step further by making his responses relatable. He frames his responses to questions through the lens of the other person's experience. In this clip, he's talking about touring as a wrestler. Watch how he relates that to Kelly Clarkson's experience as a musician. But here's the thing, we are a global touring company, so we'll do like a show in Shanghai and then come back to San Francisco and do a show in San Francisco. And a lot of times, and you know this from, from being a touring musician, mm -hmm. sometimes travel gets messed up, sometimes flights get delayed. So you Instead of just stating his response like most people would, he knows that not everyone will understand what it's like to be a WWE superstar. The podcast host in this next clip, Andrew Santino, is a stand-up comedian. So he relates what he's about to say to his experience as a comedian. They're talking about responding to people that think that the WWE is fake. Is apathetic or ign it, there, it's ignorance. Yeah. You know exactly like, oh, you, you don't know what we do. When people are like, oh, it's fake. Yeah, the outcome's predetermined. It's, it's for the entertainment of the audience. Yeah. So how can you consistently do this even when you don't know much about the other person? When you're talking about an experience, focus on the emotion underneath that experience. In the clip that you just saw, he talked about ignorance. Not everyone can understand what it's like to be in the WWE. But most people have met someone who's ignorant. That said, inevitably things will go wrong. We've all made bad impressions on people and said things we shouldn't have. For instance, John's relationship with The Rock started off poorly and they did not like each other. Because now we're in the, the same cage wanting to come out triumphant so we wouldn't talk to each other. There was a lot of stepping over the line of boundaries of what's permissible and trustworthy in the ring and what's not. I violated his trust again by calling him out on some shit that I you know, didn't necessarily ask for his approval. He did the same to me, so we grew farther and farther apart. Some background is necessary here. In 2011, John and The Rock had a rivalry in the WWE, which was supposed to culminate in a match at WrestleMania 28. During the promotion of the fight, John would call out The Rock and say things like this. I guess my angle came from the fact that he was openly saying, like, I love the WWE. And I'm like, man, if you love it, why aren't you here? This led to some bad blood between the two. Here's The Rock talking about his rivalry with John. But we had our rivalry, and we're at now we can look back on it. Was it was so real? Like we really? had real problems with each other. But John is pretty special here. He shows us a way to recover from those bad impressions while gaining respect in the process. The first thing you need to do in those moments is to find your fault. Here's John talking about how he started to repair his relationship with The Rock. Step one of any conflict is to somehow find your fault. And now watch him outline the specifics of his fault. Concern is to safely do the show. That's the magic. And the magic is to be able to do it again and again and again. And you trust your performer. Nothing's different when you verbally have issues with each other. It's all in good fun and it's all for the business, but you're supposed to have trust with each other. And I violated his trust. The next thing you need to do is to express empathy. To do this, you need to take a step outside yourself and think about how the other person must feel. And I know that the build wasn't easy on him. He, he has the world in, in, in the palm of his hand. And to come back and be kicked in the nuts by some cheap shot kid who's trying to make a name for himself, that sucks. He's trying to give to the business. Like, what is this guy? I get his perspective. You find common ground with people by understanding their perspective before sharing yours with them. Most people do the exact opposite. In fact, John went above and beyond and showed his sincerity through his actions. I tried to lose with as much humility as possible. There's an iconic shot of me on one knee just with the WrestleMania garb around me and me with the worst look on my face. Like, I just, 
lost the biggest moment of my life, which I did. After John lost his match with The Rock, this is what he did. So the first thing I did was went to, I went to Dwayne's mom and I gave her a big hug and I said, I know you were brought up in this business. I hope you can understand my perspective because I said some bad things to make you feel bad about me. And I said some bad things about your son. And I hope with what you just saw in our performance, you understand that my goal was simply to sell tickets and do business. Then he said the same thing to The Rock. This is how you admit to being wrong and recover from a bad impression you've made on someone. Moving on to what I believe is John's greatest strength. He goes above and beyond to make other people feel special. This is the kind of emotional reaction that John gets from people. Ironically, every interaction I've had with you, you make me feel the most seen. We all have a deep need to feel seen. And if you can do this for somebody else, they will love being around you. But how can you make other people feel seen? One easy way is to call out what you respect about someone else. For instance, John respects a strong work ethic. When he sees someone that works hard, he lets them know. I, I think with you, and from what I've seen, my perspective is you're a million places at once. You, mm -hmm. you're, you're a very hard worker and you're trying to do a whole lot of things. You have two podcasts. Yeah. You're a touring comic. Yeah. You're always planning for your next special. You are uh, a full-time actor and you're trying to extend your reach. You have brand ambitions. A famous celebrity like him has a lot of different projects going on at the same time. My time has become my most precious asset and uh, I go like hell. Like I hosted the Kids' Choice Awards in LA, immediately took a plane to Madison Square Garden to have a 3 p.m. performance there yesterday, flew here today. Uh, when this is done, I literally will hop on a plane to go to Charleston, West Virginia to perform and then do the same thing in Pittsburgh again uh, on Tuesday. I'll fly to Boston to do a two-day shoot for a uh, hefty. And that's why it's even more impressive that he's generous with his time. He often extends interviews. I want to be super respectful of your time, so uh, thank you no, so wait, much. Wait, you wait, got more. We you do, got more. What? We have more. Yes. Look, yes. look at this. Yes. This. This is why John Cena is the best. Watch, or he will randomly take questions from the crowd. We do with the compliment fest. What do you? How much time do we have? We got as much as you want. We're okay, cool. Let's take some questions from the crowd. Oh, it's okay. oh, wow. uh, front row, go. And I haven't even talked about his incredible work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. One way you can emulate this habit in your life is by sharing specific support with people around you. When you see a loved one suffering, don't ask if you can help. Suggest how you can help and let them decide if they want it or not. When you build a life around going above and beyond for people, over time you will earn their respect. Hi, John. Not handicapped, I'm incapable <laughs> because of your message. Your mind goes to a dark place when you get injured. Never give up. And you know that I learned that from you. We all go through things that are tough to deal with in life. And this habit of supporting others will help you quickly form lifelong bonds. People remember who was there for them when they were going through hard times. I fell into a deep depression and I'd just given up on life. I got back on my feet. You showed me I can. I owe it all to you. That's when the deepest connections are made. And after a life built around giving off yourself to others, one day you too will have the privilege of receiving someone else's gratitude. Thanks for changing all our lives. That's extra special. Thank you. I'll say.